Hey everyone, got a weird one today. Got a Mitsubishi HC3800 that turns on but doesn't turn on. Relay clicks, no fans, no lamp, no nothing. Really strange. Let me unplug it. We'll reset it. So what I first tried, just in case, was doing a timer reset by holding down those two guys and pressing power. Got the status light flashing twice. That tells me that it reset. So let's do a little bit of diagnostic before we really open it up. Take the uh, lamp cover off and we should get, yep, that's right, flashing power light. So the lamp switch is working. It tells me the power supply is partially working, but maybe not all the way. So I'm going to have to open it up. Let's unplug it. I'm going to take the lamp out. And then I'll flip it over and start taking those screws out. Unlike some models, this one's pretty straightforward to open up. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. So we'll start taking those out. I'm gonna let's see. Eh, I can use the drill. Let me get the drill. little hint this comes off first sits up in there so you take all those screws out that peel out the bottom that comes out and then from there we should be good it's probably going to be a keyboard yeah i can't do this one-handed just so you know that's where the keyboard unplugs right there cn2 now we have that out. We can see the top. It's uh, pretty much a standard DLP. Not sure who makes this. I don't know if Mitsubishi actually makes it or if it's uh, Cortronic or you know one of the other OEMs. It looks kind of like a Vivitech. This dual fan setup like that. I've seen that in Vivitechs before, but these type of wires make me think it's a little bit higher end. And it's Mitsubishi, so it should be pretty decent. Probably Cortronic. Anyway, next step is to uh, get all this off and get down to the power supply. Um, but actually, before I do that, I'm just going to take the shield off. And then we're going to check voltages along here. That's from the power supply up to the main board. And I want to see what that looks like first. So I can test this properly. I'm going to take the keyboard out and... Plug it back in so we can test it and see what's doing. So I'm going to take those out. And now that's reconnected. So when I plug this in, I should get solid red because I have the switch kind of jammed in. So that means we should have some volts here. Zero, zero, oh, 5.7, let's get that wire out of the way. It's time to get new leads, these leads are starting to get stiff. Zero, now this is in standby, so I kind of have a feeling I'm only going to see that that five for the turn on. Yeah, just 5.7. That's all I'm getting on this end. So let's turn it on. Relay came on. So now we should have more. I 
I haven't pulled the service manual for this. Wasn't expecting to. Yeah, 2.9. So it looks like the low voltage is all good. I kind of suspect the problem is going to be like a bad uh, secondary fuse. Let's see, 5 volts. Although I'm not seeing 12 volts. I don't know if I'm supposed Well, no, actually, I probably should see 12 volts for the fans, especially. Let's see what we got on the fans. 3.3, temperature sensor. Yeah, no 12. Yeah, we're going to have to go down to the power supply. Let's unplug it. Take my ground lead off. Turn the meter off, save batteries. And I'm going to re-disconnect the keyboard. Oh, and so you know, I protected the open connections so with a little bit of gaffer's tape. So I'll disconnect that. Let's get a little shot of these guys because I'm going to unplug them and those and take this off and hopefully it all comes apart. Here's an important tip. If you take the keyboard out of one of these, be careful about this plastic bit. It'll just fall right out. And then those little light tubes can just fall out. So if you take the keyboard out, make sure that stays in place and you don't flip this over. Got that bugger out. It wasn't too bad. These are a little tight, but not bad at all. This this reminds me of Vivitech, though. I know I've seen Vivitechs like this. In fact, they even usually have that similar cutout on the back. Main board only has one, and there's usually a serial port here, and then a audio, I want to say, or maybe a trigger control for a screen. I forget. But this is the same chassis as a Vivitech, so this must be Cortronic. If anybody knows or has insight on this, let me know. I always like to know who the OEM manufacturers are for these kinds of things. So now let's take this aluminum bit out and look at the power supply. Oh, and these little things are a real treat. These little plastic rivets. Just pulling out on it a little bit. Now, yep. I'm going to do the same thing on that side. And it is loose. There's the ballast. So I can do this all one handed. Just connect the uh, high voltage in. And we'll just kind of let's see if I can. Ah, I'll just unplug it there. Then I can set this whole mess out of the way. And then we can look at the power supply. Get that mess out of the way though. Now, this connector is for temperature sensors. The one there, one on that plate right here. Rather than pulling all that apart, I'm just going to leave it tethered and just set it out of the way. Try to take apart as little as possible. See, part of the problem these fans, I don't know what it is about them. They just get so dirty. That's spinning okay, but it's so full of crud. So, that'll have to come out and get cleaned. I kind of have a feeling this guy cleaned it right before he sent it in. We're going to find a problem down here somewhere. This is, yeah, this is a ViewSonic, basically. Secondary power supply. There's not 12 volts coming out. Something's bad. So we'll take this out and we'll see what's going on. And it's out. There's the power supply. White part is the uh, primary slash high voltage. Green part secondary slash low voltage. Standby power supply, that's a regulator switch chip, switch mode chip for that transformer. That's that 5.7 I was reading. So I got to check all these guys and I see that resistor, that uh, RF-238 looks a little heated. So I'm just going to start checking there and working my way across. The fact that there's no high voltage is concerning though. So, this board might be bad. I mean, it can be fixed and whatnot, but eh, we'll see where we go.